so we're continuing to look at Buddhism, and we mentioned that everyone is tied to the cycle of birth and rebirth, and it's the total person who is within that cycle of birth and rebirth, not just the soul. I want to just mention, and I'll put them on the board here, the different strands that go to making up the person. First is matter. Matter, sensation, perception, um, mental impulses, and consciousness. Those five strands. Constantly changing, constantly impermanent, but always staying together as five strands. Why do they stay together? Because I want them to stay together. I want to keep being born and reborn. That's what holds it all together. Uh, impermanent, constantly changing. Uh, when I look at a picture of myself when I was two months old, uh, there at Bumangi, I think the first picture taken of me, and I look at myself now, I say I am the same person, but I suppose there is not an atom in that little boy that is in me now, you see. So we're constantly changing, and yet we always hang together as a person because of the desire, the tana, to hang together. And that will continue to happen that we stay a person until we are released through arahat into the eternal nirvana. That's, that's, that's the basic framework. It's a very profound philosophy. Uh, I remember once speaking with a, um, a, a Baptist pastor in Bangkok, and I wonder why so many Buddhists are becoming Christians these days and being baptized. He said it's because of the joy of, uh, of Christ. That, that's why people are becoming Christians. And then he said, Buddhism is such a powerful, such a profound philosophy that a Westerner cannot understand it. So here I am, a Westerner, trying to explain Buddhism. <laughs> so I surrender. <laughs> I'm doing my best. But he said, even your best is not good enough to really explain Buddhism. It's too profound, he said. And so he said, you can't argue with the Buddhist philosophically, but just the joy of the Christian way, that, that's, that's, that is what convinces them in Bangkok, he said, to become, uh, to consider the Christian path. Um, so the Christian engagement with Buddhism is oftentimes a very philosophical enterprise, but I'm not sure that the philosophical arguments are very satisfactory because, as I say, they are two very different philosophies and theological systems. Um, and um, when you die, the light is passed on then to the next rebirth, a little bit like a candle. If you take a candle, you light it, and then you extinguish the one candle, but before you extinguish it, you pass the light on to another candle. It's that notion, you know, of the light being passed on from candle to candle. We get passed on from uh, life to death, from rebirth to rebor being reborn, like that, like the light in the candle going on and on. Quite interesting and quite profound, Buddhist psychology. The emphasis, of course, is on emptying one's ego. Ego emptiness is the goal. Of course, then a philosopher would say, but how can you speak about ego emptiness when there is no ego to empty, you see? Because Buddhism has no ego that it talks about in terms of these strands uh, that go together to make up the person. <clears throat> Several times when I visit Indonesia, I've gone to uh, this amazing temple here in central Java um, at uh, Borobudur. I, uh, I, I wrote it on the board here, Borobudur. I have it here. It's a massive temple, really massive. And uh, each, 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 each uh, level uh, are steps going up from level to level. And the steps are not the same space from each other. One step is large and another is small, like that. And my guide, when a couple times when I went there, has explained that they are at different spaces, the steps, so that you are forced to meditate, to take your mind off of anything else except this right now, the right step to get the next step, you see. 
if they're all equal, then you go up the steps without even thinking, like the steps here. But there, since they're unevenly spaced, why uh, it forces mental discipline to put your leg at exactly the right space from one to the other. And at the base, at the base of, let's just imagine that this is this uh, huge, huge temple. At the base, um, there are uh, thousands and thousands of stone figures carved out of the rock at the base of this amazing temple. But those, those figures are covered with a stone facade. And I asked my guide, what is this about? Well, he said, it is to remind you that the activities of life are a distraction from proper meditation. And so you do all these lovely figurines, but then you cover them with a stone facade so you can't see them anyway. And here's a mother uh, nursing her baby and a farmer th with his plow and go someone else going deer hunting. All kinds of activities, the kinds of activities we do in life, but you can't see them because they're covered with this stone facade over these figurines. I think another reason for covering them is so that the weather will not destroy them because they are really a treasure. But my guide explained it as being an attempt to remind us that what we see in life, which seems so delightful and wonderful, is really a distraction from having proper, uh, uh, proper desire, which is the real goal. And so you cover this, these, uh, these figurines with that stone facade. As you go up, as you go up the, the uh, uh, tier after tier, you have these many stupas, which you saw there in the picture, uh, these round or sometimes pinnacled little, little temples. And within each of these stupas is a little window. And some are square, some are rectangular, some are circular. At the very top, there's no window at all. And again, they explain this as being a visual representation of the progressive movement towards Arahat. And when you get to the top and there is no windows at all, that means you've now arrived at Nirvana, <laughs> which is perennial silence, you could say, perennial darkness, perennial uh, uh, emptiness, nothingness. Uh, there, the, uh, there's no windows there in the top stupas at all. The windows of various shapes and sizes are further down the, uh, the, uh, the uh, structure. Uh, amazing. And it's, a, it's like a big show and tell there in central Java, a big example, a temple, uh, unlocking some of the mysteries of what Buddhism is really all about. We invite you to participate in the International Bible Teaching and Gospel Sharing Project. Whether these Christian expanded educational opportunities will become available to people around the world depends on all of us. We very much need and appreciate your prayer and financial support. For more information, please visit tvsseminary.com.